Now that we've got Bullseye working, it's time to make it look great. We'll start by adding a background image to the game and adding some style to the labels. The first step is to add some images we need to the project, so let's get started. In the resources for this episode, you should find some images. So go ahead and download those if you haven't already and open up Bullseye. And you wanna open, for the first time we're switching file, open to assets.xe assets. This is where you store all of the images that you use in your app. And just take all of those files and just drag them into the left pane over here and release. And you can see here that it's actually sorted the images here into four different sets. So background, button, info icon, and start over icon, each of which have two versions, a at 2x and an at 3x. Here's what the 1x, 2x, and 3x entries in the asset catalog means. 1x is for low resolution screens, the ones with the big chunky pixels. There are actually no low resolution devices in existence that can actually run iOS 13. They're too old to bother with, so you're not likely to come across many 1x images anymore. 1x is only a concern if you're working on an app that still needs to support iOS 9 or older. 2x is for high resolution retina screens. This covers most modern iPhones, iPod touches, and iPads. Retina images are twice as big as the low res images, hence the 2x. The images you imported just now include 2x images. 3x is for the super high resolution retina HD screen of the iPhone Plus, iPhone 10, 10s, and 10s Max models. If you want your app to have extra sharp images on those top of the line iPhone models, then you can drop them into the 3x slot in the asset catalog. There is a special naming convention for image files. If the file name ends in at 2x or at 3x, that's considered the Retina or Retina HD version. Low resolution 1x images don't have any special name, so you don't have to write at 1x. When an app displays an image, iOS tries to use the version of the image that best matches the device's screen resolution. And if that's not available, it uses the next best version. So in practice, when adding images to your app, you want to add the at 2x and at 3x images to make your app look great on all devices. Before we get back into adding these images into our project, I wanted to show you this really handy guide I like. It's on paintcodeapp.com and it's called the ultimate guide to iPhone resolutions. I have a link to this in the show notes for this episode. This is a really handy guide because it shows you all of the different iPhone versions out there and what the screen dimensions are in terms of points and how they get rendered in terms of pixels and even how they are rendered if they're rendered at 2x or 3x and so on. And you can see here that they're all these days either 2x or 3x, except for way back in the really old days of the iPhone 2G, 3G, and the 3GS, which no one really uses anymore. And so this will help you understand um, which 2x or which 3x work on each device. All right, so let's go back to our project. And I wanna show you in how we can find out how to set the background image of our app. So assume you don't know how to do this. <laughs> assume I'm not right about to tell you and you were trying to figure this out on your own. How would you do that? Again, I'm trying to make you a little bit self-sufficient here as much as I can. So you would go to help developer documentation and you would go to a different section. Last time we were looking at the Swift standard library section. This time you can go to the Swift UI section. It gives you an overview here and it talks about different areas uh, of the Swift UI framework that you can use. And the main one is uh, views and controls. And it, it talks about what you can do with views and it has different topics here. And it talks about different types of views that you can use inside your app. So remember everything that we've used so far in Swift UI is a view. So a button is a view, a text is a view, everything's a view basically. So if you wanna see things that all of those controls can use, we would want to look at the base view class itself. So I'm going to select the view class and scroll through here to see what sorts of things are, are available to do. Well, you can set the size of a view, you can set the position of a view, you can align views, padding. We already learned about padding earlier. And there's a section here on setting the foreground or background of a view. This sounds like what we want here. So let's click this option here. Now, sometimes you come across documentation <laughs> that isn't really fleshed out that much like this, especially if it's in beta, like this uh, SwiftUI is in beta right now. So 
we don't actually have any examples or anything like this, so we have to piece it together based on just looking at the definition here. And this is going to be hard to read and hard to understand at first. The goal here is to just give you a rough idea, and as you learn more about the syntax of Swift later on in this learning path, all this will start to make more and more sense. But the rough idea is this is a method you can call in any view. The method's name is background. And it takes, let's see, two parameters. The first is the background of which you want to set. And this happens to be either a color or a image. And then you can also set an alignment of what to do with that, that image. For example, if you want to center the image or maybe pin it to a certain side or something like that. And it returns a, a modified view with the background now set. Okay, so we have a rough idea of how to use this. So let's go ahead and give it a try. So let's go back to our code here. And basically we wanna set a background on this entire view here. And so if we go to the top of body, the main view we're returning is a vStack. So we want to call the background method on that vStack. So we gotta make sure we put it in the right place. So again, we gotta scroll all the way down to this bottom of this method. And here we are this is the final curly brace creating the vStack. This is the final curly brace that ends the body method. So we're going to put it right here, and we're going to call background, and select that option. And for the background, we're going to use image background. And we could have looked up image in the documentation too to see how that works if you were discovering that on your own. And for alignment, we'll do dot, see how there's all these options here. We're going to put dot center, which happens to be the default as well. And you can see that my update has uh, my preview has already updated to show us the background image, which is great. Now you may wonder why do we put plain old background and not background at two x and so on. Basically, the name to use for your image is whatever you see in the sidebar here. You don't actually use the file name. The file name doesn't matter. You can put whatever you want. Um, it's the name over here that matters. So that's that's why. All right, let's just build and run and make sure it looks okay when in the simulator as well. And there you go, we've added a background image.